Book. Behind me is Bubka, the oldest oil field, oldest established oil field in the world. Can you believe it? Stick with me for the tour. Have a look at all the interesting bits, stuff that I got to learn on the trip. It's a beautiful day for it. Okay, so there's five working oil fields. Two of them are from the 19th century, so we're going to go look at one of those now. And they're all working, they still extract crude oil from here. Yeah. Okay, so this is oil well um, Victor. This is a reconstruction. So, but it's meant like a period reconstruction. So this is one from the 19th century. No oil in it. But it's just to show you there's, there's a few like, there's, there's more than, I think there's more than 10 ish of these that are like reconstructions. Yeah, no oil in the bottom. But what he was telling me is there's actually, I said five working oil wells, there's actually 55. And um, five of those are within this museum. They, if I'm right, 3,500 3, tons of oil or something they extract a year. And yeah, so we'll, we'll get to look at these all, but like I say, this is a reconstruction of oil well Victor, but yeah, let's keep going. So here's a map of where the, um, yeah, where the deposits are, of like the gas and the oil. So the gas is green, gas is, gas is green, oil is the black ones. So he was just explaining to us the, um, he was just explaining the um, percentages and stuff. So they, like oil-wise, they extract 6%, so they buy in all the rest. So that's 6% of the oil, obviously, that they extract, they get to use themselves. And then gas, it's 30% and they're buying the rest from like Russia and they're all over the other, yeah, all over the other, like America and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, so we'll, um, yeah, we'll keep going. It's really interesting, actually. You can start to smell the oil. So now we're going towards, I think, a working, a working one. Sorry, I hopefully you can hear because everyone's chatting away. But yeah, so we're going to go towards a working one and you can, I can really start to smell the oil and I can imagine it'll only get much stronger when we, um, when we get near there. And here we go, some more beehives. I love bees over here because they understand that bees make the world go round. And because I'm a honey bear, I love that honey. Okay, so yeah, so this is this where we're currently standing is called like the the boiling pits or something because it's where the oil and that came to the surface a long time ago. But this isn't the oldest working oil oil well in the you know just in Europe. This is the first the oldest established oil oil well in the world so yeah obviously the people used oil and stuff a lot you know a lot in history for different things like uh, religious and you know all sorts of other things as weapons and stuff so you know oil wasn't new but it's just the first time they had made a like established a well and that's what that monument was so 18 whenever it was and um, yeah, the, it was quite yeah, it's really interesting. They they call, that's called um, I think the translation is like oil oil rock oil rock pool or some or something like that. But yeah, I, I thought it was like the oldest just in Europe, but it seems to be the oldest and first established one in the world. And hopefully we're going to work our way towards this one that's still the one that's still working. You know, the one of the older ones that works. But yeah, I'll show you guys that when we go when we come to it. But yeah, really, really interesting. Get a um, yeah, they do guides in English and Polish and stuff. So yeah, definitely come have a look. It's amazing. Okay, guys, we um, we made it to Oil Well Frank, who is uh, from the yeah, 18th century, still still working oil well. I'll explain to you a little bit of things. But as you can see, like just little touches, like you can see why it was used as a as a pres as like a preservative. Check out the way the water it's drained a little bit, so you can see the water sitting on the top from the oil. That is oil right there. Let me try and do this. I don't want to drop the camera down or slip in because it's quite slippery. But can you see the bubbling? That bubbling effect is not, it's, um, it's the gases escaping from the oil. So you'd put the bucket from there, from old Frank over there, pop it into this, and then you'll go across into here, which is like a storage tank, which is sitting down there. And the reason why you would leave it in the storage tank, they leave it for about a week, so it'll separate the water from the oil. And you don't put fresh crude oil straight into a drum because the, the gases will pressurize and it could explode and stuff. But yeah, this is working. 18 like stages, this is insane. It's really cool. But the smell of oil obviously is really, really strong. And yeah, just a little bit, just being careful. Hopefully you got to see the bubbling in there. And yeah, so all you would do is you would, let me try and show you guys from the, from the back. So yeah, so you would pretty much twist that. 
Yeah, but it doesn't. It's massive. Absolutely massive. Well, that's cool. They dug these things manually by hand to the depth of a hundred meters. And then you can see it's like reinforced with like wooden slats. Oh, you can't really see. So apologies for that. But you could hopefully you got to see the bubbling down the bottom. Can you see the bubbling? Yeah, I can see it slightly. But yeah, that's old Frank. I'm just happy to see that, but that's really, really cool. And like I say, the guy's like, obviously, he's knowledgeable because he works here and stuff, but it's amazing. You don't know half of it. <laughs> Always learn something new every day. It's the best way. And like, this place is amazing. Like 10, to 10 to like 15 minutes drive from like Krosno, like city center. It's just tank from the 20th century and I was asking why it has this wooden bit at the bottom. So the reason why that is, is because obviously when you leave the, the oil in the tank, the water, water separates. So this is like just to insulate and keep the water that's in the bottom of the tank. I don't know, like not such a, you know, there's not at not such low temperature, so it doesn't, you know, freeze and obviously burst the tank. That's pretty clever, isn't it? Just simple solution for a, for a simple problem. So here's Jane, and this um, the way it extracts oil is the, the yeah, pumping jack, or they call it the <laughs> the nodding donkey. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So this one works as well. So this produces a um, a barrel a day at roughly like let's say seventy three dollars ish. This is a really deep well, so you can't even see to the bottom of it. Uh, like one hundred and thirty meters dug. There was that was the depth that was dug to manually, but then they've obviously gone a little bit lower. I think the pump's like two hundred odd meters down. But yeah. So obviously this tripod sort of frame doesn't do anything anymore. It's just this um, this nodding nodding donkey action with the pump that brings the stuff up. The um, pipes are all insulated and stuff, just wrapped with um, yeah some rubber, some plastic stuff. Well, that's cool, yeah. Let's see if we can show you. Yeah. Okay, so this is a this is when we went from the man you know hand hand digging uh, wells to a machine. So you'd have six guys hanging on that end there and they did them um, so now they do rotary drilling and this was percussion so I looked at it and I thought it was maybe rotary of sorts but it does not so it's percussion so you'd have six dudes down there and this would work like sort of like an hammer hammering action so you'd have the you'd have the bit on the end and it would just smack in so you'd let six dudes would be lifting this up and down and hammering so we do half a meter a day right so this isn't these numbers so half a meter a day and they would dig this to about 400 meters so yeah so 800 and something days to dig a <laughs> to dig a well now this this bit here with this wheel that was to take the actual crushed rock out so this little device here well this this bit of well, device, well this um, bit of pipe here is called a spoon i think is what it's translated to and what it would do is you'd put that into the borehole and all the crushed rock would sort of fill that and there'd be a flap inside that would close and then they would be able to extract the crushed rock but that's really it's just so this is pretty big you have to obviously see it to see that the size of it but yeah there we go so we went from digging it by hand to sort of yeah still using a machine but it's still pretty manual and it took forever it seems there we go a little bit of details about it. Hopefully I'm getting all these facts right for you guys. I'll try and get the scale, it's massive. Okay, so we are here is the here's the drill bit, still percussion. Still percussion drilling, but this is the end of the bit. And here's the action. So that bit there. But they would go up and down. Now the guy was telling us it's pretty interesting. Is this is where you would operate, like the clutch and the brake? I don't know if you can see properly because the sun. Yeah. So those two posts coming down here. That's where the operator would operate the clutch and brake. And he had a really important role on the rig. He was pretty much yeah. It was the most important role in the rig, and he got paid quite a lot. So like from one month's wage, put into perspective, you'd be able to um, you'd ever be able to buy a house. That's pretty interesting. Okay, so let me try and show you. This is a really nice rig to show you how the whole thing actually worked and sort of explain better the percussion bit that I was trying to show you earlier. Okay, so there we go. So they used a locomotive engine to do the percussion part, the hammering up and down. Can you see the way it connects? And this is much bigger. So this is based on a, on a Canadian oil 
Canadian oil rig, but the um, this locomotive engine in the back was made in Poznan in some in the famous factory. I don't know what the factory's called. Sorry, but it's um, but yeah, now they they had improved it because it, this would dig one meter a day. So yeah, hundred percent improvement. That's pretty cool. This is all connected up so that looks. That's why hopefully it shows you the action slightly better. Let me show you. Hopefully it's got more details on here. So if I've missed anything or got anything incorrect, people can yeah, let me know in the comments. This is really, really interesting. So happy I came. So happy I came. And like I say, guys, just like 15 minutes out from Kozna city center. Old petrol station. Old, old petrol, old petrol company from like, I don't know the exact dates, but people will probably, probably know it's CPN, Central Production something, I don't know, that's pretty, there you go, CPN. <laughs> you probably see petrol stations that look a bit like this nowadays, I suppose. Oh, petrol pumps, oh sorry, the light's not. I'm not helping. It's pretty cool. Wow. So, so this is the, uh, yeah, so this, so this farm is what, what we can see behind. And that's a distillation process when you distill the oil and stuff. So there's a little interactive, interactive guide there. But yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? We're gonna go hopefully see the distillation process and those bits in a bit. So here's the distillation process. So you would have put the crude oil in there. It needs to, I think it's roughly 180 something degrees Celsius. And then, the, you know, it would cool inside this cooler. Yeah. And what would be produced would be um, kerosene. See, this is people, just a little picture of how they would pick it up from like when the oil bubbled to the surface and they'd take it to like the villages and stuff and sell it. Because like I said, you can use it to preserve wood and people used it for medicine and all sorts of other stuff. There's the miners uniforms for special occasions. So rank starting from general at that end and then all the way to, you know, your normal miner. And this is here, some pictures of what it looked like. 1908. Wow. Oh, the lamps are used for different things. Number 75 most common, 73 most common, 79 is what they used in doctor surgeries. The one back there was for train conductors. So I was trying to figure out which one my granddad would have used on the trains. So he reckons it might be that one. Um, yeah, there's just loads and all the different things. The reason why is because the guy who worked at the oil fields or who was there, he like owned, or like ran it for a while. He was the first one to come up with the come up with the idea of a lamp, and it was the first one used in an appendix operation in in Lviv or something like that. The guy was telling us, I was trying to under, yeah, I was trying to get as much details and stuff as I could for you guys. Just all the decoration ones, the ones that just cost loads, 19th century and stuff like that, all like handmade ones and stuff, and the ones behind you all the commonplace ones. He lived to the like 60 and died of pneumonia. So here we go. This is the um, like machine room. So you had like a. Here's the machine and repair workshop. So here's all the like workbenches and stuff. This was like a polishing wheel, a drill, your workbench back here. Let's see. The press. Massive lathe. And then they used to turn all of these pulleys off of some guys on the other side of the building with like on just like a handle then when they made when the oil well made money they got this motor and let me see if i can find the dates for you i think it's 1854 can you see it there 80, yeah, 1854 to 1958 and yeah it's still all, all all period it's all the same it's all original your bit that i was telling you about on the other side Obviously they didn't use that when their motor kicked in. The old working forge, well, yeah, the old forge. All still the same, all period. So you'd have the... Um... Okay, so here's the old old working forge. Yeah, that's not period. That's new. <laughs> I extinguish it. Yes, that's cool. Have a look. 
there's all the tools and stuff and fire. There's the pump that would obviously make it a bit hotter. There's a little hand crank. A little anvil. Yeah, everything had to be self-sufficient. So these, oh, hopefully the light doesn't mess it up. But yeah, these railways ran to all of the, all of them, all of the oil, all of the oil mines. And yeah, they had to be self-sufficient. They had to make everything in-house. That's quite large too. That was the machining shop. And there's the forge. So this one did four meters a day. It's still... It's so it's still percussion drilling. Did about four meters a day, but it's due to like the steel cable, the bit slightly turned inside, which increased the drilling. Which increased the, the drilling speed. And also a large, large... Yeah. Here's the pump. So the guy just turned on the engine to run these pumping jacks. So there's two. So let's try and show you. So this is what you normally, when you see oil, oil fields, or anything to do with oil, this is what normally springs to mind. And as you can see, there's like a wheel. There's a like some, it seems like some sort of like an engine house inside. So you just turn that on and you'll be able to see show you, show you the action. There we go. That's cool. And then there's another pumping jack down the bottom or nodding donkey. You do not want to get your hand in there. There's one electric motor busy running two pumping jacks at the moment, but it can run the maximum of 11. But that is flying. This drill bit is huge, number one. But these are all the different drill bits. They must have weighed an absolute ton. The two different devices and how they look the geology and try and find where the oil is. This one you drill a little bit like to 30 meters and then just put a nice explosion in there and blow it up and then you know read the readings that come back. This one is called the thumper which I think they use more like now is well not now anymore I suppose but they used to use more recently it was just a thumper you hit the ground and then it would read the seismic waves and then the you know the computer would tell you where where the oil could potentially be in. So a lot better for the environment, I can imagine, than just blowing shit up. Wow, this one's massive. That's a rotary drill. Yeah, so this is a this was a blow uh, it's basically like a, like a valve to stop the oil and stuff coming up in the gases but it caught a light at one point and they this destruction that you see here is actually tank there's like three tank shots to blow this valve off which, to stop the fire there's one one shell went in there and then the other two must have done the rest of the destruction intricate this oil refinery wow the detail. The detail. 